Okay, today is your first online lesson. So this is going to be the first of many for the rest of the year. Um, this one is going to be basically introducing you to points, lines, line segments, rays, angles, and triangles. Um, how to label them, what the characteristics are, so on and so forth. Okay, by the end of this, the objectives are that you'll be able to recognize points, lines, line segments, rays, angles, and finally triangles. Okay, a point. Point is a commonly represented by a dot and labeled with a capital letter. So here I've given you five points. Notice the capital letter. This is important. Points have capital letters, always. So if you see a lowercase letter, it's not a point. So that's very important. Capital letters, okay? That's about all there is for points. Moving on to lines. Lines are made up of points and are straight. Lines extend infinitely far in both directions, which is shown by the arrows at the end of the line. For example, arrow. Arrow, that means that it goes on forever this way and this way. Okay? So that's what those mean. Uh, notice that this has a lowercase m. It's lowercase, so you know it's not a point. In these other lines, you've got three points on this line that are all uh, capitalized, so you know those are points. Same here. You really can't tell, maybe, but this is an L right here. Um, it's supposed to look like this. Okay. Um, as far as labeling lines go, uh, there's a few different ways we can do it. For this one, there's really only one thing you can do, and we can call that line M because there's nothing, no other information they give us. There's no points. There's no nothing. Here, we've got a line with three points on it. There's actually six different ways that you could label this line. You could call it line VC. Now, you just can't write the two letters. You have to put this above it. Straight line with the arrows at the end so that we know it's a line. Um, we'll get into rays and segments and how those are labeled later, but you'll see the importance of that. Um, you could also call it line CD. You could call it line BD. Okay, and with lines, the order is not important, so you could also call that Line CB, line DC, line DB. So there's actually six different ways that you could name this line. This one here, now we've got a lowercase letter to the outside labeling the line, and then we have two capital letters labeling the points on the line. So we could call this line EF, or like I said, we could reverse it and call it line FE if we wanted to, or just line L. Next, we have line segments. Line segments are similar to lines. They're made up of points and are straight, but unlike lines, they have a definite beginning and an end. Okay, so notice I've got some capital letters here. That means that we have points coming in. Okay, this line segment, like lines, you take the two points on the line and you write the points in order. Uh, the order doesn't matter. But unlike a line, we just put a straight line above it, no arrows. That tells us that it's a segment. So we could call that one SR or RS. This one, okay, this isn't one segment. This is actually two. You've got one segment here, and you've got one segment here. So this segment, we would call that PX or XP. And then this one, we would call segment XQ or QX. Now notice they share a point. That's fine. Uh, in fact, that's going to be important to understand how that uh, kind of affects things later on when we get into angles and triangles. But for now, understand that these are two segments that intersect at point X. Okay? So, difference between a line and a segment, definite endpoints, and we label them differently just by putting a straight line above no arrows. Okay, we name it by its endpoints. Okay, rays. Again, like lines and segments are made up of points and are straight. Rays, however, begin at an endpoint and extend infinitely far in one direction. What do I mean by that? These are all rays. This is where they start. Okay, they start at a point. Notice there's no arrow here. Okay? It starts at this point here, and then there's that arrow saying that it goes forever in that direction. Same with this over here. Starts here, goes forever in this direction. And this one as well. 
Okay, it goes forever in that direction. So when we label rays, we always have to start with the endpoint. So like for this one, we would say A, B, and then for the symbol on top, what do you think we put? A line had two arrows, the segment was just the line. A ray, from left to right, just a straight line with an arrow at the end. Okay, this one over here, I'll get back to this middle one, don't worry. This one over here, we've got ray XY. Make that look more like a Y. Okay, this one, now we've got three points on here. So, we could have ray CE, we could have ray DE, and we could have ray CD. Now, two of these are the same, one is not. The ones that are the same have the same starting point, the same end point. I say starting point because that's where the ray starts, but we call this point an end point because it doesn't go any further past that. So this one and this one are the same because we're saying it starts at C, goes through that point on forever. So this one goes through C, or starts at C and goes through D forever. This one starts at C and goes through E forever. But since E and D are on the same line, it's part of the same ray as long as C is the starting point. Okay? Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, if not, feel free to ask me questions in class as you're doing your work. All right, next up, angles. Angles are made up are, is made up of two rays with a common endpoint. This point is called a vertex of the angle. The rays are called the sides of the angle. So here I've got four different angles. Well, one, two, three, and then this one's kind of a mashup of angles. But so we've we looks like four angles. We really have one, two, three, four, five, six angles there. All right. For this one, um, all we have is a number there. Okay, that usually is a met when you see it right there in the vertex area. That usually tells you either a. Uh, that it's an angle, we always use, we try and use numbers or lowercase letters to uh, label angles. But a lot of times, this number here is going to be the actual measure of that interior angle. Okay? So here you'll see it. Here we could call that angle one, angle two. We'll get into these other ones here in just a second. Oop. So, like this one, we would call angle three. Anytime you're naming an angle, you put a little angle out in front of it. This one, we could call angle A. We could call angle B, A, C. Or we could call it angle C, A, B. Now notice the difference between these two. What's similar and what's not. The A, because it's the vertex right there, always has to go in the middle doesn't matter where you start and where you finish, but the vertex has to go in the middle. So it's going to be three points. Here, I, the, for this one, I started at B, went B, A, C, and this one I just went the opposite direction, but it's just, it's talking about the same angle. Here, because A is the only point that's a vertex for these two angles, and it's not a vertex for any other angles, we can just call that angle A. This one, we can only label angle D, because that's the only thing we're given is just this point here and the angle. There's no other points on that line. And then this one, it would depend on what angle you're talking about. Angle one is the same as angle POY, which is also the same as angle YOP. Angle two is the same as angle YOP. X and X O Y. Now because again these lines with the arrows at the end mean that this goes on forever so we could also call this angle Y O R or angle R O Y. Now what you can't do is you cannot call angle 1 
angle O. Because that's a vertex for this and this. So because it's a vertex for multiple angles, you can't do that. So make sure of that. And actually, there's a third angle here, POR or POX, and that would be that out completely exterior angle. So just keep that in mind as well. Do not, under any circumstances, label that vertex <coughs> as just the angle. And here I'll give you an example. Name the angles in the figure. I want you to, on your notes, take a minute, pause me, and uh, go ahead and see if you can name all three angles. Okay, and like I said, I gave you a hint here. There are three different angles. First one, angle PQS right here, or SQP. Different way of naming the same angle. Angle SQR, or RQS. And then the outside one, PQR, or RQP. And again, I'm saying it here again because it's important. You should not name any of these angles as angle Q because all three angles have Q as a vertex. The name angle Q would not distinguish one angle from the others. So that's why you don't do that. And last but not least, triangles. A triangle has three segments as its sides as well as three angles. Even though the angles will not always be made up of rays. Because if you notice, these are capital letters which means that these are points here. There aren't any arrows extending, okay? But when you're talking about a triangle, we can call the, these three different angles here angles, even though there's no rays as part of those angles. Okay, a triangle is made up of a union of three segments, because notice here's a segment, AB, here's another one, BC, and then we have AC as the third segment. Okay, the intersection of any two sides is a vertex of the triangle. So like the intersection of AB and AC is A, and that's a vertex. The intersection of BC and AC is C, because that's a vertex. And I gave you some examples of what this is going to look like. Anytime you're labeling a triangle, you put the triangle out in front. In order, go around the triangle. So A, B, C. You could also do A, C, B, or anything, you know, anything as long as it followed an order. Okay, and these U stands for union. Okay, it means that you're adding things, you're building on it. So, segment AB, the union of segment AB, BC, and CA, CA form triangle ABC, which is this right here. When you're talking about intersections, it's the opposite of a union. Okay, it's where they meet one point. Okay, so the intersection of AB. And BC, which is this right here, is B, this vertex. Because if we were to look at it as, let's say these were, you know, just lines. Okay. And let's say these were points on the lines. Okay, so I could label this line AB. And I could label this other one BC. And if we were looking for the intersection, we'd do the upside down U. And we'd say that they intersect at B. So it's the same thing, whether it's a triangle, whether we're talking about lines or rays or segments, it's the same thing. That upside down shape, U shape <coughs> means intersection. Okay, so that's the end of this. Hopefully, uh, if you, you can go back and if anything was confusing, Watch it again, see if it makes more sense. If not, at the end of your notes, I want you to take a minute, write down some questions that you might have, um, and ask me as soon as class starts tomorrow. If not, you can get started right away on your work.